Today I'm going to revisit Professor Brian Cox and his appearance on Breakfast TV quite some time ago. I originally did my video on my old channel. Since I've come back to YouTube, the original version, which is quite a passionate breakdown of the professor I may add, has become quite popular with Brian Cox fans who like to come and vent and spew and act triggered and make all sorts of pantomime space threats. So I thought, why not do another video, another breakdown, addressing some of the comments they've said, uh, which didn't really need addressing, but I will indirectly just addressing Brian's comments here. And giving Brian a second chance here, perhaps I was a bit harsh on the young professor here as he's trying to prove that the earth is, is a globe. So let's give it another go and let's try and be a bit easier, a bit more relaxed, a bit nicer on the young professor here as he tries to sell us the globe. Please note, top left corner, title of the video, Brian Cox reveals why the earth is round this morning, okay? That's not me putting that title up there. That's the title of the video for the people that claimed he wasn't on this TV show to promote and sell the lie of the globe. I get it, because when we view the video, it's more like a book promotion than any kind of scientific demonstration proving the girth is a globe. So let's revisit Brian. Let's try and be a bit more relaxed. Um, and let's see what he's got to say. Forces of nature. Yeah. So, so in what areas, what are you looking at? Well, the, the idea is that if you look at the, the world that we see, so, so you know, the green leaves, the blue sky, spherical planets, all those things. I am going to, like I did in the original, if you want to see the more passionate version, link in the description, I'm going to stop you there. How does looking at lights in the sky, even if they're round, prove in any shape or form, in any kind of scientific fashion, Brian, that what we are looking at are spherical bodies in a vacuum? How does that actually prove that, that observation? And what science have you got to back that observation, those claims, those stories attached to the observations that are looking up at the sky? What demonstrable science have you got to back your stories that are attached to the lights in the sky, Brian? Nothing. What proof have you got that those lights in the sky are spheres in a vacuum, Brian? Nothing. They're telling you something about the deeper structure that underlies nature. So even life, so next week's is about the origin of life. So it's, it's how did we, you know, we feel living is a, is a very special thing, but it's a property of matter, of this stuff. The, 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 the earth was once just a dead world when it formed you know, four and a half billion years ago. And at some point that... Again, makes a bold statement, got no proof whatsoever. Everything this man has said so far is just story time. Jack and Ori, I don't care if there's bits of paper in a vault somewhere stating that what this man says is true. I'm only interested in real world demonstrable science. The fact there's none to prove the very foundations of where we are tells me everything we are told is built upon a lie, not an opinion, a scientific fact. So you go in story time about the theories of globe earth, cannonball earth, really doesn't interest me. You've got no science to back that claim and it doesn't prove whatsoever that we are on a ball. Brian. Matter came alive. And you go to some really far-flung destinations and as you can see there from that tiny bit that we showed, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, it's beautifully shot and you see some incredible things that you wouldn't necessarily have to get, get to see. Yeah, I think that, that was the idea to send film crews out and it's sort of the way, you mentioned David Attenborough earlier, the way that his programmes work where a film crew can go and for, for months even film something spectacular. Now I can see why the Brian Cox fans were defending this nonsense, saying he wasn't trying to promote or sell the globe lie. I can see it. It is more of a book promotion. And these are the things that these people get offered up, the money, the books, to play their part in the narrative, whether or not they're intelligent enough to work this nonsense out, or they're just dull and stupid and ruled by the ego. This is how this works. These are the trinkets and the bonuses these people get. But what we're not getting, 
but the title says Brian Cox reveals why the earth is round. Is any science to back that claim? It's just Brian Cox sells his books, cashes in for playing his part in a deception that is Globe Earth. Because bearing in mind, this is one of the representatives online, on TV, of the Globe Earth. This man is a passionate Globe Earth speaker, believer, a scientist, a professor, and yet so far, all we've got from him is his promotion of his book. Not that great, Brian, so far. We saw that wave on that clip through the Amazon. Yeah. So the wonderful, incredible tidal wave that goes up the river. And you see in, in the film that someone spends their life surfing it. So there's kind of, his whole thing is to wait for this wave and surf into the jungle of the often Amazon. How does it come along? It's a, it's, it comes when, when the moon and the sun are alive. So I think it's about once every couple of months or something right. like that. The, the, the Porra Rocker, it's called. Well, you're, you're not, because they go out and they sit for months waiting for something to happen, uh, the right thing to happen. You're, you're not there all the time. You're in this one less, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, that, that was the idea, to film these beautiful things. You can't, if I'm there, it's kind of, you can't spend all that time. We had different crews out at di the same time filming things. And then the idea was to try and stitch it together. <laughs> Essentially, you, you ask the question, what is it? So, so far, we just had waffle about a book. Um, I think this is near the scientific demonstration stroke level which Brian excels at in a minute uh, and which essentially is all that is offered up by the globe and even then it doesn't back the claims so you, you can wonder why I you know people like myself would call out Brian the top boy the number one face on, on TV online and yet what he produces to somehow refute the monsterable reality which is the simple truth of this realm, which tells us the globe is impossible, but what he cites and offers up is laughable. What's the biggest, the tallest mountain you could make on a planet like the Earth? What, what sets that? So you've got the Earth's gravity, which depends on, on its mass, really, how much yeah. stuff is in the Earth. It's pulling it down, pulling it down. So you can imagine there's a force on the ground. Again, we've got to imagine there's a force. No one denies things fall down. We we'll call it gravity. What is denied from that on are the silly heliocentric stories that are attached to that that can be proven by real world demonstrable science to be false. So me imagining a force is being pulled to the center of the ball isn't scientific, Brian. Ah, oh dear. And, and, and the bigger you build the thing, the more the force is. And you can work out, well, how, what, what is it when that force overwhelms the strength of the rock and it starts to sink? And it's actually on Earth, the, the mountain Mauna Kea, which is one of the Hawaiian volcanoes. It's actually taller than Everest, if you measure from the surface of the seafloor. And that's sinking. So that's as tall the as it can get. The mountain's sinking. Yeah, so, so it's too so, heavy. Oh, dear. Just more claims, even if it's true. How does that prove the shape of the Earth? How does that change the monstrable reality? How does that make large standing bodies of water suddenly able to display convexity upon its surface, Brian? How does it do that? How does that mountain or volcano or it's whatever's going on with it make tower cranes, pendulums, dead steel, upside down, side on, on a spinning, wobbling, oscillating cannonball? Doesn't, does it, Brian? Because the globe's impossible. It's as tall so, as they go, yeah. they could go here. So if you've got a big enough planet with enough gravity, essentially, then, then anything that gets too big will sink. And, and gravity just works in it. It doesn't care which angle so you're at. So it pushes it back. Into a circle, to a sphere, if it's big enough. And then you look out into the solar system, the little moons, about less than about 150 miles across or something like that, have not got enough gravity. So they're all... Bless him, he just lives in a fantasy world. Half truth, i.e. based on an observation, looking at something at the sky, the rest just pure fantasy and delusions attached to those observations. There's no real world science to back the fundamentals of what this man stands by in the first place. It's just delusions, stories, delusions. Misshapen. It's called the potato radius. So you get That's potato a good name. shapes. I can say that one. <laughs> but the potato radius. So, so so Oh, Brian, you weren't a very good musician. I want to be nice. You've got the charisma of a mannequin. So far, we've had no demonstrable science, waffle about volcanoes, 
stories essentially which were a, a promotion for a book you're selling again let me remind you the title top left Brian Clark reveals why the earth is round still no real world demonstrable science because the earth being around or a sphere is scientifically impossible as Brian is going to show us and has shown us considering he's here to make a statement about globe earth and all he's done is promote himself and his book oh dear with the, the oh yeah. So well, well, the way that I demonstrated it, you just wanted to get messy, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't you? So the way that we demonstrated it in the, in the program is say, so what am I doing? If I want to make that into a ball, then I have to apply enough force to overcome the. If I don't apply enough force, then it'll stay like some. Again, his force is applied pressure. Yet his model is a pulling force. Again, who 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 does he represent in his model? This is the best, the heliocentric scientific community can come up with wet samples to somehow refute demonstrable reality of mistake you know potato shape so that's what gravity is doing really it's acting as a as a force that's squashing it down and and so gravity is squashing and pushing it down but yet the the theory of gravity is a pulling force from the center of a ball you can't even demonstrate your own model brian the best it gets is you not representing your model, not even having a clue that you're not representing your model, and yet producing a wet sample of somehow proof that reality is wrong. Oh dear. And it'll turn it into a sphere because it acts the same in every direction. Hello YouTube. And that is as good as it gets. I hope I wasn't too harsh on Brian, but it's difficult when you're dealing with someone who's deluded, and this isn't an opinion, Brian stands by the globe. We've just seen what he's offered up. And he, he, he really is deluded. And it's not an opinion. Here's a scientific assessment that is based on scientific fact about Brian Cox. Brian Cox is a deluded moron. That's not a, an opinion. It's a scientific fact based on the evidence he's provided today and the fact that what he stands by is scientifically impossible and yet he says fundamentally that it's true and that reality is wrong and all he can cite is a book promotion and a wet sample and even then he's not even representing his pantomime model dear oh dear